Well, much like you apply a property and a value, you do that with the selector here too. And you just add the colon, and this is the hover state, so whenever the mouse goes over it. And uh, I think that's good, but we're just going to change the color, so whatever's in here is going to be what happens when we actually hover over it. Which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. And, uh, oh god, well, what else would we want to do here? Uh, the border, zero pixels, everything else is going to remain the same. And yep, you see now our border is gone, and if I hover over it, you could probably change the font color, in fact I will, but you see, you can hover over it, and it's very responsive, and it's it's customized. Um, I am going to change the font color, though. Anyway, but you can pretty much, that's just a white, pure white color, the whitest of the whites. So when you hover over it, instead of it being that dark, it's going to be the white over the blue. But uh, if you were a web designer, you could go back and test and test with various colors until it looked really good. But uh, anyway, we're going to continue on. We have... So we did all our forms. We did the the elements that don't have that. Now we're going to move on to the fonts. Uh, guys, this is your main... Really, the main thing that I like about CSS is if you have six different pages and you want to modify all the main font on all the pages, say you have an about and, a, and about us and a contact us text and you have an introduction text and um, you know how to get to our facility text and all that you can have it all inside a simple font tag and so long as you provide inside those font tags an ID of main font in your CSS document whenever you modify that CSS document it'll change everything and all you have to do is update that CSS so to show you what I'm talking about I'm just gonna come up here and I'm going to pretend that I'm in my CSS file, which I do need to say at this point, um, you should know, we're modifying the CSS for this one page. But if you wanted to modify the CSS for all the pages, it really is as simple as adding like a, a just creating a .css file and then linking it to your document. And I'm going to have a tutorial on that, so don't worry. But we're just going to move on here and we're going to say main font this would be my main font on all my pages for all my paragraphs and my articles. First, we're just going to specify the font family. That really is the beauty of it, guys. You can do this once, and you don't even have to worry about it ever again. Ever again. And uh, font size, font family. Let's change the color to my favorite. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's a very dark, dark, dark gray, almost black, but just enough so the eye can notice it's not black completely. It might appear completely black though through the video. And uh, yeah, so now if I come down here, now we have just a lot better looking font. It's not Times New Roman, you know, it's not cheesy, it's not corny. It adds some kind of style to the website. This looks like something you would see on a WordPress blog or something, you know? It's a very nice font. You can make paragraphs out of that, and it's easily readable. So. Yeah, that's that. And you can also see a very good thing to point out here is inside all my tables. I have the same font. Font ID equals main font. So it went ahead and it modified it, modified it, modified it, that's not a word. It modified it for every single element in my HTML document, including the ones that were, uh, you know, child elements of a TD, who were child elements of a TR, who were child elements of a table. <laughs> it actually went through the whole thing and applied it to everything on the fly. Very useful. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and modify a table now. Let's say you have a table and it has a bunch of data in it and you want to you wanna add a hover effect to it, cursor effects. Uh, what, what else would you want to do? Remove the border, add a border. Oh, man, CSS allows you to do a lot of things with that. But what you can do is you can come up here. And now, what did I say? I'm oh, sorry about that. My ID was table data. All right, that's all I need. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say table data. And I'm just going to add an extra space here so you can see where I'm starting. So there's our table data and let's change the background color of that element. Background color, let's make it uh, by default. Let's make it like a gray, you know. Nothing nothing crazy because we're going to add a hover effect to this row here and it's a uh, it's going to turn out to be pretty useful. But we got color. You know, we're not actually going to change the color. We're not going to change the color of anything inside of it because everything that's inside of it has already been changed by our main font. Because everything inside of it has a main font ID. Um, what else would we want to change to this? 
I mean, you could, if you wanted to add a border to this, change the border height. You could say like, you know, border of uh, one pixel. You could specify the border color, you know, border color of whatever, but I'm not gonna do that for the sake of easiness on the eye. If you wanted to specify padding within the document, that means uh, basically the spacing between the outer edges of the table box and uh, or the row or the column with whatever's inside of it, which in this case is the font. Let's just say like five pixels, five PZ, five pixels. And it really is that simple. We're just gonna copy and paste this and change the state here to hover and change the background color. Dun, 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 dun. Let's make it, let's make it, yeah, let's make it that blue. And then let's change the color inside. This time let's do it, make it pure black. What else? Um, yeah, let's change the cursor so that when you hover over it, it's going to be, well, you can change any type of cursor, crosshair, help cursor, the question, inherit, um, text cursor, font cursor, the waiting cursor, the hourglass that you guys know, um, anything. But we're just going to say, say default. And we're going to save that file, save, preview in Firefox. And there it is. And now we can hover over it, and it is very responsive. And um, you can see now that it's a little bit bigger. That's because of that five pixel padding that we added there. So it does it over here, the top, the bottom. It's just a padding. I mean, literally like a foam padding, except in terms of pixels. And uh, you'll notice our cursor stays the same when hovering over these elements, too. It doesn't change to a text because we're hovering over text. Um, it stays much like this. You could change these into buttons in HTML and have a pointer over them. I mean, it's completely up to you. But yeah, I think this really demonstrates a good, you know, deal, if not all, of CSS selectors. The only other thing that you can do is add a class to something. And let's take this element here, the paragraph, and let's say it has a class of, I always use I mean, before I go on with classes, I always use IDs, guys. It's much more um, individual, I think, and I think it looks cleaner anyway. But you can always use a class, too. Let's call this a test class. So now if I save the document, and let's go up here. Let's delete our old, you know, modify everything. Well, it's not. Let's just say, let's get rid of that there, and let's call this uh, dot. And what was our class again? test class dot test class so anytime you want to modify a class instead of adding a number sign you add a dot and in the HTML element itself you specify class equals instead of ID equals but it really is the same concept so I mean if I come down here you'll see the text is still red still red but I prefer IDs don't ask why I just prefer IDs um, because you can use IDs a lot more in the future when you get into jQuery and JavaScripting, things like that to modify the HTML documents, add pretty scroll effects, bounce effects. I mean, that's all jQuery. That's all down the road. But I'm just trying to prepare you and give you uh, good techniques in terms of web design. Anyway, guys, I think that really about wraps up this tutorial. Um, stay tuned for future tutorials. Uh, I don't know what my next C CSS tutorial is going to be on. It's probably just going to be on, uh, I don't know, what, what else would you have to do within CSS? The beauty of CSS, guys, is <laughs> it's simple. It is a simple, simple language, and it modifies everything within your document for you individually, hover states, up states, background colors, background images. I already had a tutorial on that. Um, you're pretty much good to go with CSS, I'm not going to lie. So it really is that simple of a concept. But um, I might have another tutorial on positioning elements and things like that. And, uh, you know, divs. I already had a tutorial on divs. But I can apply those same concepts in CSS. And I think that is what my next tutorial is going to be on. But uh, with that, guys, my name is Graham with Tutorial Clarity. Take care.